Well, good morning, Solid Rock. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? And I'm glad to hear it. Would you stand to your feet? Go shake someone's hand if you haven't already. We're going to sing the second verse of this song. Praise you in the heavens, joining with the angels, praising you forever and today. Praise you on the earth now. Let's sing the song. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Even if you don't have a lot of breath, that's okay. You still have it. Praise the Lord with it. If we could see how much your worth, your power, your might, your endless love, surely we would never cease to praise you. Let every song is song 76 in our praise books I think watch it be something else and you try to sing it along with me with other lyrics <laughs> who are we here to worship this morning church Jesus. and you know that he is so good to you he is so good to me a lot of times we don't realize it and we don't believe that, but it's true. You take a moment to look around you and think what he's done in your life and what you have, what you don't have because of him, thankfully. Um, you could say God is so good, and that's what this song is called. God is so good. any further I just want to say how grateful I am to have Miss Diane back with us this yes. morning 
This next verse kind of goes right along with that. We've been praying for you. He answers prayer. Sing that with me. He answers prayer. Yes, he does. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. Let's sing hallelujah like this. Hallelujah, 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 he's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God. God is so good, he's so good to me. Soon and very soon. crying there. Thank you for singing with me. You may be seated. Thank you, Miss Candy. Good morning, church. Good morning. So good to see everyone here and those visiting with us. Thank you for being with us. You scared me for a moment that that thing, that phone went off. Uh, well, can't do anything about it. So <laughs> and then it came back on. It's like, thank God. So good morning. <laughs> if it cuts off, it cuts off. We come back home. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's all good with this electronic stuff. Amen. I love how even little babies now, they could get them that telephone. Oh yes, even the one yeah. and a half year old. They know them pictures on her icons. Amber she puts up, uh. And I, I love babies that do that. They, they mimic us very well. And, uh, but they can see them icons and just pictures and crest that and get to the five little monkeys. That's all, you know, the five little monkeys or the baby shark. They know how to find it on their phone. So, and they're not even reading yet, they just know. <laughs> But I'm very blessed to see that. It's awesome. It really is. So glad you're here today. Um, latest prayer meeting, November 5th. Open schoolhouse, 6 o'clock. Men's prayer breakfast, November 13th. November is almost here, y'all. Uh, 7.30 a.m. at the schoolhouse. Food bank was yesterday. Thanks for all the help and everything. Appreciate that. But it'll be the 20th of November, 9 to 11 a.m. 
Trunk and Treat, October 23rd, 3 p.m. here at the church. Sign up sheet in the back. Uh, Solid Rockers Choir Practice, October 28th, Thursday night at 6 o'clock here at the church. See Candace Phelps. And uh, let's see, um, we we'll go up here. See um, Leah McDowell for the ladies uh, prayer meeting and the men's prayer breakfast. See Alan Blanchard. Amen. Um, let's see. Homecoming with Reverend Bill Lewis and Linda. It's going to be October 31st. Amen. Amen. 11 a.m. Come on out. Lunch to follow over at the schoolhouse after that. There's a sign up sheet in the back. So we're really looking for that as well. I know we got some great birthdays this month. Wow, I'm going to pick on the ones this week and coming up. Mike Duffs was the 12th. Amen. Yeah, give her a hand. Robert Tracy, my son in law. I think he's 32 or 33. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but happy birthday to him. Trevor Witts, the birthday's on the 17th. Is that today? Amen. Today's the 17th. Amen. And I think he's four, five, six, seven. Something like that. Six, seven. <laughs> they grow really fast, so I've seen your moment. I don't recall exact. I know he's between five and six or seven. <laughs> and a blessed child. He's a sweetheart. And Cheryl Randall with Candlelight Ministries. Hers on the 19th. Stacy Saunders is on the 20th. Rose Cash is on the 20th. Robin Gillespie, her birthday is on the 23rd. 22nd or 23rd? 23rd. 22nd, all right. Well, that's and a good time. Well, well players, um, Jess's daughter, what's her name? Je Jess's daughter is the, thir the 13th. All right. Well, so we don't know. Y'all got to play us. You know, we might get it wrong. Amen. Tr uh, Trisha Haramusi. Never said her last name right. It's on 27th. Patricia Whitten on 27th. Gary Mays on the 27th. Parker Coley's on the 30th, man. Awesome. <laughs> Give him a hand. Yeah. 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 Barker's on the 30th. My brother's is on the 29th. We always pick on him because we just didn't miss it. <laughs> but uh, it's a great time to have a birthday in October. Anniversaries, Danny and Don Anderson on the 10th. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Scott. Wonderful. Yeah. Ian and Caitlin Cash is on the 10th as well. Pray for them as they're traveling back. They've been to the beach. Amen. <laughs> I'm glad they've enjoyed it. Looks like they had a great time there. But glad you're here in God's house today. I'm going to ask for our um, deacons to come forward. The morning ties and offering. But keep those that's traveling, those that's out with the health uh, problems and different things going on. Please keep them in your prayers as well. So glad to see everyone. I know that she never complains, at least outright, but I'm sure she hates us doing this, but uh, last minute all the time. But Leela, can we get your help with a song this morning? Please. See, <laughs> she even if she is upset, she's probably never going to tell me that, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Amen. 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 Well, like I said, we're just blessed to break the song this morning. A lot has been going on everywhere. And we just need to take the time to lift up our hands and praise the Lord. Amen. Well, it's just your two hands or somebody else's together. And praise the Lord together. And this is one Sister Diane and her husband gave us a long time ago. You know it. So y'all sing it with us. Two more hands to praise the Lord, no matter what's going on. Amen. Whenever they get it, start rewound over there. <laughs> 
put this here. This is one, um, you already had this queued up and you didn't even tell nobody. Oh, I just print out the words. That's all right. No, it's perfect. It's perfect. Like, I can't just words. in case. Yes. Just in case. And I love that this song was written by a lady named Candy That's right, Christmas. Candy Christmas. She's a wonderful um, lady. I don't know yeah, anything so about her, but her oh, name alone makes me want to be friends with her. She's one of my Facebook um, friends. She's great. <laughs> yes. Um, but this yeah. song, if you've been to Solid Rock for five minutes in the past, you've heard this song, and you can sing it with us. We all know that, you know, there's a, a lot going on in each other's lives, in our personal lives, in the church, in the state, in the country. But there's only one place that you will ever find peace with any of that. Yeah. And that comes from the Heavenly Father. Right, and this song yeah. is called The Only Real Peace. Sing yeah, it with sing us, it with church. <laughs>
Thank you for singing with us, church. Taking all this paper up here. There you go. Yeah. Amen. Scripture read at this time. Brother Mike Duff, would you come, please? Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on up. Let me put this right here. Then. Good morning, church. Oh, what a sparse little group we got here today. We gotta watch for this falling away, don't we? They said that that was gonna happen in the last day, that there's gonna be a falling away, and we're seeing it. Not just here; I mean, everywhere, everywhere in church. I did notice more cars in the Baptist church this morning, though. I don't know if you noticed that or not, Dave, but I mean, they they starting to bring back some more people. Thank God, because they had a very scarce little group right there for a while. But it seems like more cars are coming back, so that's good. And the only peace we do have is with the Lord. Yeah. That's all. I don't know where you're going to get any other peace from today because I don't think it's there. So we better stand firm on his word. I think the Lord himself is looking to see who's standing. I really do. And I do think the Lord is coming back soon. I just feel it. I'm sure you do too. But we have some time before all that goes down. And I think that time is supposed to be spent trying to get them back into the Word, back into church. And it's tough, because I'm going to tell you, folks, I talk to a lot of friends of mine that and they, I don't know what else to say. They're just lost. I, you know, it's uh, they don't want to be in church. They don't want to hear the Word. They're worried about the world. Everybody's worried about what's going on, what's going down, where am I going to be in all this? Well, you're not going to be on a good side if you're not right here, in this right here. I can tell you that right now. I just wonder what's keeping the Lord. The Lord must have a lot of patience, that's all I can say. Because what's going on in this world right here, I'd be throwing lightning bolts down here right now. <laughs> but thank God he is the Lord and he's in charge, and I'm not, thank God. No doubt. <laughs> but we do need to stand strong, and we do need to have a backbone. And we're going to be tested in a lot in these days to come. And we're being tested right now. And I have a lot of people arguing with me about politics. That's, that's a bad thing to argue with me about politics, but they do. And, you know, I just go right back to, you know, I have a lot of people that tell me that they're Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm in church every, every that, that, just because you're in church every Sunday doesn't mean that you're a Christian. There's a lot of Christians that, that don't go to church, that can't go to church, but they're more Christian than a lot of us that sit here every Sunday. And I know them personally. But there's no way you're going to sit here and tell me that you are a child of God and you're going to vote in these politics for abortion, same-sex marriage, 52 genders, boys in the girls' bathrooms, and every other ungodly, unholy thing you can think of that they stand for. Now, I'm telling you to God's honest truth, there is no way you can be both. There is no way on this earth you can be both. Because God is seeing you and what you are doing. And when you pull that lever or push that button for that person of, or the pits of hell that's running against some people that I don't think of as God as they should be, but at least we have a side to pick on. Yeah. There is no way you're going to sit there and tell me what a Christian you are if you're pulling that lever down for that. There's no way. There is no way on this earth. Not only do we see it, the Lord sees it. He sees it all. And you're not going to hide that from God. He sees it. He sees it all. 
So you're not going to hide. You're not going to stand behind that curtain and pull that little lever back and go, well, I don't think nobody saw that. Oh, yes, they did. And that's where we are in this nation right now. You're either on the right side or you're on the wrong side. It's one or the other. There's no in-between. There's no gray area. There's none of that. You're either standing with Jesus Christ and his word and what he says, or you're not. It's simple as that. And our job is to try to get them back on this right here. And I'm going to tell you it's tough because this world is really fighting hard for them, I'm telling you. They want our kids bad. They want all our children bad. I can tell you that right now. And they're going to get them if we don't stand up. If we don't stand up and fight against this evil because that's what it is. It's pure evil. And I, I'm talking to the choir right here. I know that because I know y'all understand what's going on in this room. You've heard it a thousand times. But, but it's a choice. Life is nothing but choices. This book is nothing but choices. And there's consequences for both. Good consequences and bad consequences. And our time is running short, folks. I, exp <laughs> I expect some big things to really start happening soon. Like I said before, we've seen what man can do to each other. I think now we're getting to see what God's going to do. And we haven't seen nothing yet. Don't think that this is the worst we're going to see because it's going to get a lot worse. But know this, in the end, we win. You just got to make sure you're standing on that platform. You got to make sure you're standing here with this word. Because without it, you're lost. And once you take your last breath on this earth right here, your next breath is where you're going to be for eternity. That means forever. You don't get no more chances. I told a dying guy not long ago, you don't have the one chance. And it's right now while you're breathing. Because once you stop breathing, you have no more choices. You've made your choice. So remember that. Time is running short. I'll be reading from Galatians today, chapter 6. I'll be reading 1 through 10. If everyone would please rise for the reading of God's word. We reap what we sow. Dear brothers and sisters, if another Christian is overcome by sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's troubles and problems, and in this way obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone in need, you are only fooling yourself. You are really a nobody. Be sure to do what you should, for then you will enjoy the personal satisfaction of having done your work well, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the word of God should help their teachers by paying them. Don't be misled. Remember that you can't ignore God and get away with it. You will always reap what you sow. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful desires will harvest the consequences of decay and death. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So don't get tired of doing what is good. Don't get discouraged and give up, for we will reap a harvest of blessing at the appropriate time. Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, and especially to our Christian brothers and sisters. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Back in the 1970s, there was a Christian singer and songwriter by the name of Dallas Holmes probably one of the greatest of his era. And he wrote a song, and it said simply this. If I had it to do all over again, I'd serve Jesus every day of my life. Since I found he alone can really satisfy and deliver me from all sin and strife. 
Yes, it's Jesus, the only one. Jesus, God's only son. Yes, it's Jesus that set my soul free. And it's Jesus Christ that's coming back for me. So if you're looking for life, stop looking right now. For it's Jesus that can give life to you. So just open your heart and unlock its door. And let Jesus cleanse your life through and through. Yes, it's Jesus, the only one. Jesus, God's only son. Yes, it's Jesus that set my soul free. And it's Jesus Christ that's coming back for me. So if I had it to do all over again, I'd serve Jesus every day of my life. That is a, it's a very, very powerful song. And it's one we need to remember when we feel down, when we feel lazy, when we start feeling apathetic about the work of God. The church at Corinth had the very similar problem. And Paul wrote them two letters to get them back on track. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1, he just simply told the church at Corinth this, and I'm telling Solid Rock this today. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Folks, God has given each and every one of us a ministry to minister wherever we are. And he gave it to us in as much abundance as he gave us mercy. And so not only do we faint not, we can't afford to faint. These are the last days that we're living in. And for a church to thrive and for a church to serve God, they've got to be on fire for him. We can't have the lukewarmness that has been washing over so many of us here of late. Either we mean it or we don't. Either we're called or we're not. Either we have this ministry or we don't. The church at Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2 had a very similar problem. And a lot of times we forget where we came from. We forget what God has done for us. I, I remember just as recent as the, the big COVID deal and the governor was ordering churches, which he did not have the authority to, to shut down all over the state of Virginia. And he even made a threat that if you had more than 10 people in your church on Sunday morning, they were going to come and arrest you for that. I remember we moved church over to the school auditorium and we brought in as many as we want to. I don't care who hears it. And we had guards around the building to make sure there wasn't nobody coming in there. We had them watching every door and everything. And then we had an outdoor service around the back of the school, and it was full. The parking lot was full, and then God spoke to me and said, get back in your house. And I'll never forget that Sunday. Man, I took my shoes off when I come in here. I'd never been so glad to see this auditorium, and it was filled up with people that were just lit for the Lord. Over the months, we've kind of got a little dim. We've got comfortable because now it looks like it, we're coming out of all of this and everything is all right, kind of like 9-11. But you know what? I don't want God to bring nothing else down on this earth to where we have to go through that again because we have become apathetic and we've become lukewarm. There desperately needs to be a change. I'm not going to preach to any of the other churches but Solid Rock this morning. So I want you to listen carefully because Jesus wrote seven letters in the book of Revelation to seven different churches in Asia Minor. And each of those churches represented types of churches that exist today and also exist, have existed during the church age. Now everything that my Bible tells me, says that the church age is getting ready to close, that it won't be too much longer, that it's over. We're out of here. And so it, 
We're going to do something for the Lord. It's time to get on the stick, folks. Here he wrote a letter in Revelation chapter 2 unto the messenger of the church of Ephesus. Write this. And he said, These things saith he, who is Jesus, that holds the seven stars in his right hand. The seven stars were the seven messengers of the churches. And it said he walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And I want everyone to understand that Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. It is not like he is millions of miles away watching. Oh, no, no, he is here, and he's watching in here with us. He's with us. Maybe that would help us put things in perspective if we understood that the Lord is in our presence even at this moment while we are gathered together in his name. And he said this first thing, he said, I know your works. Everything that we have ever done in the name of the Lord, he is well aware of it, well aware of it. And I know that Solid Rock is one of the hardest working churches that I have ever attended. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, and I am grateful for that. It would not be possible to have the different ministries that we have today if it were not for the people who are there behind the scenes working so hard. It's not a thing about recognition. It's a thing about serving the Lord. And I know that. And he said, I know your labor. And I know your patience. And you have all exhibited a lot of that. A lot of uh, labor, a lot of patience. And you cannot bear them which are evil. And you have tried them which say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. We've been hit over the years with a number of people that would come and say, I'm going to do this for the Lord and I'm going to do that for the Lord. And then a little something comes along and up and out they go. Never to be seen again. You know, I, I had one that hounded me all the time. You need to make a stand against the government and the evils of the government, and I did. And they said, well, we're going to separate from you because you're not obeying the laws of the land. That's in the dictionary under hypocrite. Now, I'm going to move on here before I wind up putting my foot in my mouth. But there are a lot of people that just because they tuck a Bible under their arm, they're not servants of God. They're servants of themselves. And when things don't go the way they want it to go, they go try to find somebody else that will cotton to them. Well, enjoy. And he said this, You have borne or carried the, the load, and you've had patience. For my name's sake, you've labored, and you have not fainted. And I am grateful that those that are here this morning at Solid Rock, you have not fainted. You're still here. You're still here. Bill Martin and I used to have long conversations on the phone. I'd be on vacation, and we'd still talk four hours on the cell phone. And we'd talk about all the people that tried to stab both of us in the back and tried to shut us down and tried to do this and tried to do that. And they all disappeared, and Bill would always say, Brother Dave, we're still here, though, aren't we? Yes, yes sir, we're still here. And that makes a big difference. Makes a big difference. Not fainted. That is something that should not be in the Christian's dictionary. And th but he said this. Jesus said this in his letter to Ephesus, and I believe he's telling us this this morning. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. Your first love. I want you to think about your first love. You can look at it from a secular point of view and you can look at it from a Christian point of view and they all kind of work together. This woman has been my love for 36 years. But you don't just... Keep it that way. We're in, lo in love with each other. We really are. We spend every single day together. Every day we do. 
The only time we are ever apart is when she goes to the ladies' meeting. And the other night she had to babysit two of the grandchildren, and she wound up texting me the whole time she was there. Now, how in the world can you get two people to put up with each other after 36 years? And I'm going to tell you, it's not, it don't just happen. You've got to make it happen. There are things you have to do. In other words, you have men, you've got to date your wives. Amen. Take them out on a date. You did that to win them. You've got to do that to keep them. Now, romance your wife. I can't talk to the women, but I can talk to the men. Romance your wife. Do things you did that made her fall in love with you. We went out Monday to Williamsburg, to Bush Gardens, and I went, we wound up sitting in the rain for an hour, laughing and talking, sitting at a table out in the open, and mist and rain was coming down, got soaked and wet, and that's why I got so doggone sick this week. But it was worth it. Do things that keep your marriage young. Do things together. Include each other in your activities. Talk to them. Tell them how you feel about them. Spend time with them. And Jim, I'm not staring at you, brother. I'm just, that light is killing me, okay? I know he's looking at me like, wish he'd turn his head. <laughs> is that good enough, Ann, or shall I continue? Okay, all right. That's how you keep your marriage young. Don't get lazy. Don't think that everything is fine all the time because you're going to wake up one morning and you'll find out it ain't. Keep it young. Keep it active. Men, one more time, date your wives. Okay. Now, that's how you keep a marriage young. And like Nick always says, if you pray together with them, they'll never leave you. It, every marriage where they sit, they spend time in prayer together, it stays solid. Now, I'm not saying that you got to worry about your wife leaving you if you don't do this or that, but I'm telling you, your marriage will fall apart if you don't hold it together by doing the things you know you should. It's the same thing with your walk with the Lord. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in the Word. And spend time in God's house. We have taken God's house so for granted lately that it is discouraging to me, too, to see it. To where so many people were once so eager to hear the word, so eager to be there. Now it's just something to do when you don't have nothing else going on. That should never be. Your marriage should never be something that you would just do if you ain't got something else going on. It should be your priority. And the only way you can maintain your power with God is by walking with God and, and by listening to God and talking with him and communicating with him every day and showing him how much you love him. And there are a number of things you can do, and one of them is to not get lazy on serving God. You know, we've got so much to do for the Lord to get the gospel out and to help people that are in trouble. And that should be a burning desire for us to serve God out of the local church. But so often it becomes the last thing we want to do after a while until another emergency comes along. And then we get back into it again. And that should never have to be. You ought to be in love with the Lord no matter if it's good times going on and not just bad times. He's not a spare tire. You don't just go for him when you're in trouble. It's kind of like a pastor was shaking hands with people one Sunday, and as they were going out the door, he said, I, well, I'll see you next Easter. Shouldn't be that way. You should get behind your church and serve God through it. He said this, remember Therefore, from whence thou art fallen. What caused you to get complacent? What brought it about? What got you comfortable? Remember.
remember, that's where you fell when you started making changes in your life to where it excluded the work of the Lord. I want you to think about that. You can get, you know you can get out of church permanently by missing two Sundays in a row. You know you can do that. Statistics have shown that after two Sundays, it ain't no big deal no more. It isn't. And it takes a long time to get back into it the way you should. I hear a lot of people would catch me on the street and go, Dave, I'm working on getting back into church. And I said, oh, is that right? What are you doing? What kind of work are you doing to get back into church? What, what, do you, what, what kind of work is that? You know, it's like I'm working to get back into Donna's good graces. Well, you know what? I know how to do that. I just go and throw myself on the floor in front of her and say, I'm sorry, baby, like that. I really don't do that. I shouldn't be telling that because y'all women are going to expect that when you get home. <laughs> but I, how I get back into Donna's good graces is I tell her the truth and tell her I love her, and it's a done deal. And I show her by my actions. Thank God I'm not out of her good graces too often. But the way it is with the Lord, you just get back into it and start serving God with all your heart. And then all this I'm working on getting back into church. Then I love this one. This is my favorite. When I get myself straight, I'll be in church. You'll go to hell before you get yourself straight. Amen. You can't do it. God is the only person who can get you straight. Believe me. You know, somebody said, oh, I need the, I need the Holy Ghost when I go to church. Brother, you need the Holy Ghost and you go to Walmart. You come on back and let him take care of filling you with whatever you need to, uh, be, how often you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't you worry about that. He'll take care of that. But you need to get back into it, and you need to be excited. Look, we can give God our time because God gave us his son. He gave us the most precious thing that was so near and dear to him, and he gave him freely for us, and none of us deserved any of this none of us do none of us deserve salvation none of us deserves God's blessings none of us deserve anything but God chose to give those things to us and the least we can do is serve him with our life I think of this song right here I'd serve Jesus every day of my life and I think about that I was called to preach when I was 17 years old in 1974. And I played at it, and I piddled with it for 10 years. And I ran, because I didn't want to have to make that kind of a commitment until finally he yanked the rug out in 84, and I told him I would do it. And I wish I had done it the whole time. I missed out on so, so much of God's blessings. And if I did have it to do all over again, I would have started when I was 17 and I would have never stopped at all. I remember I was 36 years old when we started this church. Can you imagine that? I'm 60, I'll be 65 in a few months. I was 36 years old. And I don't regret one minute of doing this work. Do I get down and get discouraged? Yeah, I do, I do. But you know what? I'm not committed to people. I'm committed to the Lord. My, my, I answer to him. And so I can't change my message. I can't change my methodology to bring people in and lie to them. I'm here to tell you the truth. And I don't want to see anybody go to hell from the pews of this church right here because I lied to them and told them that everything was okay. I'm not going to do that. And so we need to remember from where we were fallen. And he says, repent. That's the next thing we do, is to turn away from what we were doing that has kept us from serving God the way we should. We need to repent from it. And he says, and do the first works. You remember when you first got saved or you first got on fire for the Lord, all of the vision you had and all of the excitement you had well, you know what? There's no reason for that to have ever gone away. God did not take that away. You walked away from it. You let it happen. That, I let it happen when I get like that. 
But we need the old fire back like we've had before. And we need to get this spirit of laziness, this spirit of slumber, and all of this, and the, definitely the discouragement and the devil whispering uh, things to you that is nothing but a lie. And somebody said this morning, and I reposted it, fear is an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. It is. Right. Fear is an evil spirit. If you're serving God, if you're walking with him, if you're his child, you should fear nothing. Mm -hmm. You should fear absolutely nothing. And when that spirit comes over you, that's an evil spirit prodding you to back off. That's one of the few tools that Satan has against the child of God. So he said, repent and do the first works. Let's do the things that we used to do. Let's get excited once again about serving God. We don't have much time left. And I think it's important with all the gloom and doom that the, that the news is trying to tell us it's going to happen this year. They couldn't, they couldn't shut you down with the, with the virus. And so now they're going to try to shut you down with, with dread of this coming Christmas season. And they're going to try to shut you down with the threat of a food shortage. Let me tell you something. My God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. All of it is his. Jesus, I mean, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. You will not have to worry about that. God will take care of you. Jesus said, if, if, you, if God takes care of the sparrow, what do you think he'll do for you? He'll, he feeds the birds and they don't sweat it. Why should we? We're his children. So let's get that out of our mind. That's not going to happen. He's going to take care of us. No matter what, it's going to be like the land of Goshen. Everybody else might be completely out of everything, but we will not fail. We will not fail. You go on and do the Lord's work, and he will provide what you need. Don't you ever worry about that. He said, do the first works, or else I'll come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except they, thou repent. Folks, the existence of Solid Rock Church... It's not dependent on me. The existence of Solid Rock Church is dependent on what the Lord says. And if he wants us to flourish, we will. But we've got to obey him. We've got to do what he has asked us to do. We have been called in this little congregation to do way more than any other church I have been in. I've been in some big churches before. I really have. I've been in small ones, big ones, and I've never seen a church that works like this one. I've never seen a church where so many people were called to do ministry like this church right here. Uh, there was a church that Don and I visited one time. It was mostly musicians in that church. We pulled up in the parking lot. And everybody was popping the trunks, and they were pulling guitars, banjos, mandolins, bass fiddles. Don and I were the only ones who didn't have nothing that we were carrying in the church. And when we got in there, there were at least seven to nine guitars on stage, and they were all tuned a little different. Yep. And they were singing their hearts out, and it was like really good, though. It was great praise. The whole church were musicians or singers, just about. Well, this church right here is like that, only it's a lot of missionaries mm -hmm. in this church, local and, and missionaries and missionaries to other areas of our country. And, you, and, and deacons and all, and you're all called to do stuff. Just about everybody in here is. And I think that's wonderful. But let's not forget what God has called us to do. And let's do it with zeal. Let's do it with excitement because we have been called to serve the king directly. To sit right under him and serve him directly. I don't know if anybody realizes what an honor that is to be called to do that. And so let's never, ever take that kind of a calling for granted. Let's make sure of it. And let's get back to serving God like we used to do. Shall we stand? Not going to hold.